All right, for those of you just joining, we're just waiting a few minutes here as, as people log in and sign up and we'll get started in 30 seconds here. All right, why don't we get started? Um, first off, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just wanted to thank everyone for attending our Disinfect and Protect webinar. We really appreciate you taking the time out today to join us. Uh, my name's Jeff Shipman. I'm president and CEO of Heartline Fitness. We've put together a really good panel today uh, and presentation uh, for you. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, we're, we're running about 25 minutes in the presentation, followed by some Q&A. Uh, those of you that are new uh, to Zoom, if you kind of scroll down to the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A button. And what we're asking our attendees do is, as you have questions, um, you all will remain muted uh, throughout the presentation, but go ahead and type in your questions. Uh, at the end of our presentation from our panelists, uh, we will um, answer every single question. Um, and again, this webinar is being recorded so if you do have to jump off or you need to share it in the end, um, we will have this available to you. So again, thank you everybody for your time today. Uh, the topics that we're covering today are opening, opening considerations, disinfect and protect. Um, we've got a wonderful wellness app um, that we can present to you. And really last but not least, we're giving you a sneak peek of the HL Beat, which is Heartline's newest customer portal technology. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce our panelists. Uh, first, we have Bob Burgess, is Head of Strategic Accounts at the Amenity Collective. We have Dr. Kelly Spivey. She is the Fitness and Amenity Advisor for Heartline Fitness. She's also a Territory Manager down in South Florida for us. We also have Justin Campbell. He is the Chief Growth Officer for Three Sages, which is the wellness app, which we will be introducing to you today. And then last, surprise guest panelist, um, I'd like to welcome Ben Bash. Ben is the Chief Development Officer of American Pool Enterprises. And with that, uh, let's get started. So opening considerations. Um, one of the things, uh, you know, we really need to understand here with, with COVID is wh what is the way this is being transmitted uh, more commonly than none. Um, and if you're like most of us, you've read up enough on this, how people are being infected is through um, airborne water droplets. And the concern that I'm presenting here and the consideration for you is um, it, it is being transmitted by touching, you know, surfaces, but in the fitness room, you're not just standing there talking, right? We are inhaling and exhaling. And to give you an idea of the amount of air that comes in and out of our lungs every breath, you're talking about a liter to a liter and a half as our respiratory rate and our heart rates go up and we're exercising. So this first bullet in the message that's critical here is you absolutely need to require that people wear masks. It may not be the most comfortable thing to work out with a mask on, um, but that is what's gonna protect the environment, the other people, if you have an asymptomatic person, right? And again, these are CDC recommendations. I'm bringing them into an understanding of how this applies into a fitness center, but require the mask. Um, and then also understand you know, additional CDC type guidelines uh, with social distancing and gatherings, congregating, depending on your state uh, type mandation. Using uh, disinfecting wipes uh, before and after and having proper signage um, where it needs to be, to be honest with you. Um, the wipes that are uh, best suited for fitness equipment do not have ammonia, alcohol, bleach, or hydrogen peroxide in them. The same thing goes for disinfectants. 
uh, that you may be using to clean via your janitorial service or, or otherwise, um, the equipment is sensitive. You would not just spray uh, you know, a bucket of bleach on your computer. Uh, there's very sensitive areas of the fitness equipment that you need to understand or bring in the professionals, obviously, um, to handle this disinfecting uh, situation properly. The second piece here um, with signage is uh, we, you know, we're all people <laughs> and the convenience of reading it right in front of me and the wipes are very close to me, that's what's going to get you a little bit better compliance versus the sign and the wipes are at the entrance and I'm not walking way back over there past Joe or Suzanne or whatever to grab wipes when they're working out to clean this treadmill off. So making the wipes and the signage conducive to uh, your, your rules or your regulations or how you're gonna operate. Don't just put it in the corner and expect it to work. Adjusting your operational layout, uh, limiting the number of users in your facility at one time, and maybe the, the, the hours or the times that you actually operate per week, okay? These are things that as you put your plan together, and again, we're gonna talk about communication a number of times in this presentation, it is critical that you have a plan uh, now, later, how you will react to different changes uh, as this is a fluid uh, scenario, um, but controlling the hours of operation, the number of people that are in there, if it's staffed, if it's non-staffed, there's a lot of things for you to kind of consider here to have the right plan at the end of the day that keeps people safe and the anxiety that they're gonna have even to come into this fitness space. So again, work through these types of things with your, your layout. Um, you can put equipment outside, you can turn it off, you can put an out of order sign on it. But again, I'll go back to the first bullet, social distancing, masks, things like that. These are key and your fitness center wasn't initially set up to operate this way. Limiting the days and hours of operation. I touched on that already a little bit. The important piece here to understand is there is, just like there's a dwell time with this disinfectant that you're putting on any of these products, there's kind of a dwell time or a disintegration time that this virus actually can stay active or infect somebody. And, and we've heard everything from three hours to nine days and really what's going on here is, is you have factors with temperature, humidity, the type of surface that it's on. Just speaking in general, um, do, do not use this as guidelines, right? These are considerations. Um, but you're looking at you know, three hours in the air in fabric. Again, if we shut down for a few hours, maybe you're up in the morning, lunchtime, and then the evening, you're giving those particles on those things time to kind of hit the floor or, or settle down where we might have been expelling a lot of air, more of it's circulating around the room. Four hours copper and wood, 24 hours cardboard, and again, these last two, um, unfortunately, uh, the world we live in in fitness is full of plastic uh, and metal. So concerning, you need to understand uh, that as a part of the environment there and in the fitness center. All right, so opening. What I really have for you folks here today is you know, a list. And again, we, we will compile this uh, and we can obviously go into more detail outside of this webinar. But some key things to consider are the clothes that you wore into the facility. Do you continue to wear them, whether they were contaminated when they came in or they got contaminated where they're in there? Uh, where were that resident or that patron travel afterwards? Uh, some of the considerations that I'm seeing and hearing are bring a plastic bag full of the clothes you want to change into, switch it out. You can leave the center, right, in a new set of clothes um, and kind of wash what you have in the plastic bag as soon as you get home or disinfect if there's, there's other routes that you're having to, to sanitize or disinfect. Um, towel usage. Um, I, I will just, I'll give you the example. You're going to sweat. You're gonna do this with the towel and you're gonna put it on the equipment, right? Probably not a good idea. Um, HVAC considerations. This is something we'll go into more in another webinar. Uh, there are solutions um, to pipe in ionized air into the fitness space that will help 
uh, attract these pathogens, the bacteria, the viruses, and eliminate them or drop them down to the floor level. Because again, we're pushing a lot of air in and out, right? In a small space or a confined space, uh, how do we attack the air disinfection side of you know, opening here too? Um, limit your users uh, in multi-purpose, right? Again, social distancing, no gatherings of 10. If you can do it outside rather than indoors, um, take those considerations, uh, you know, heed, heed those things. You can get more people uh, involved and engaged um, rather than a smaller multi-purpose room that you know, you're running a class and you get three people. Um, it's a little bit harder to operate. The rebound scenario. Um, this again is planning and communication. What you need to understand here is put your plan together now. If something does happen, someone is infected, uh, there are, you know, for those of you with businesses, there's HR considerations that you need to understand with what you can communicate within your business. There is also, um, you know, guidelines and rules that you really need to file, fo you know, follow with exposing any of your residents too, if someone was uh, actually asymptomatic and was in the facility. So do your homework here and understand and put a plan together with how you will re back, react if you have a rebound. And the same thing really for, you know, it's a fluid situation here. So as the state uh, mandates change as federal, um, you know, for us, we Heartline covers Maine to Miami, and we have an operation in Chicago. Um, we're monitoring it every single day. Atlanta's opening up. I live in Maryland. I can go get my hair cut now, which I don't think I will do. Uh, but there's all types of things um, that are changing. Um, virtual classes. So this has come up on some of the other webinars I've participated in. And, you know, you don't need anything fancy. Uh, there's Zoom, like we're doing right now. There's Instagram. There's ways to bring this to people's homes and connect. And I think there's so many tools. Take the opportunity. Put yourself out there. Connect with them. Let them know you're still there. People need that support. So if you haven't done that, I highly uh, recommend and encourage you to, to do that and find a resource to connect, provide the class, or, or just some sort of workshop for you know, mental health, right? The piece that we're not beating up our bodies or maybe we're not involved in fitness. Um, those people need help too, okay? Signage we talked about, wipe locations we talked about, video training. You know, I, I think everybody's getting on board with Zoom, right? And I think it's a wonderful thing that allows us to connect, not sit in traffic. Um, making a video, whether it's your Zoom presentation and it's just you, don't just put something in writing with here's our rules and our guidelines and how we're reopening. Give them this, the body language, the face, do a video for them. They will, the body language communicates more than the words, right? And we all know how often we read an email and we either love it or we're, we're on fire, right? So trying to communicate through video and more of these sensory tools that we have so people can understand your empathy, your message, your reasoning why uh, you're possibly taking their temperature at the door where there's only one door to get into the fitness center. Uh, again, the, these are the things at the end of the day, the more that we can communicate, uh, even if it's an inconvenience to you or your residents, do everything in your power to make them feel safe uh, and comfortable in the environment, whether it's the fitness center or any, any amenity space that is there. So with that, I will turn it over to uh, Dr. Kelly Spivey, and here you go. Hello, Abe. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, so disinfect and protect. Um, so as we've been hearing about, coronavirus is airborne. It spreads through respiratory droplets. Um, when someone coughs or sneezes, it becomes airborne. If you happen to inhale those, um, it's transferred. Um, but even if someone's talking or breathing heavy during exercise, um, you can still um, be exposed to that. That's why distances, distancing is important. Um, man, I remember my first boss, he was such a spitter. Like, you had to distance yourself from him every time that you uh, were in a meeting with him. Um, also, surface-to-surface -surface transfer is important. So, um, as, as the previous slide showed, there's different um, dwell times on the surfaces. 
And um, when you look around your fitness center, um, most of the hospitable services tend to be plastic and metal. So those surfaces are kind of what we're talking about when we start talking about how to disinfect and protect. Um, and, and, and certainly COVID-19 is, is an important thing because that's what uh, everything's in the news, but we also need to be concerned with um, MRSA, cold and flu viruses, herpes. So we want something that kind of kills off all those um, uh, viruses, pathogens, and keeps them from transferring from one person to another. Um, the English language seems to kind of use some of those terms interchangeably, cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. Um, when we get to the science behind it, basically cleaning is just soap and water and scrubbing. So when you clean your hands, soap and water, say your ABCs, get rid of all the, um, the pathogens that are on your, your hands. When we start talking about sanitizing and disinfecting, that actually involves a chemical component and something that's going to actually kill those germs. Maybe not just on contact, but eventually it kills. Um, if you really want to take a deep dive into the, con into the topic, the EPA has an entire list of disinfectants that will kill viruses like COVID-19. Um, I think there's 374 the last time I checked. Um, but the important part of the equation is not only do you want to kill off the virus, but like Jeff said, you don't want to kill your equipment or damage it. So it's important to look at your ingredients and your labels on whatever you're using to disinfect the surfaces. No ammonia, no bleach, no hydrogen peroxide, no alcohol, like the rubbing alcohol kind. Um, there's several companies that make wipes that are specifically geared towards fitness equipment. It's tested, it's by the manufacturers, and it's approved for those types of surface, surfaces. Um, the other thing to consider is some people are, are using spray bottles because um, if you don't have enough wipes containers, you can put spray bottles around the facility, but you don't want people spraying directly on the equipment either. Paper towel, spray it, then do the wiping. Um, ACSM, um, or American College of Sports Medicine, um, they have a facilities guidelines and, and standards book that they put out. Um, they offer daily, weekly, monthly, annual recommendations for cleaning and disinfecting. Um, I'm happy to provide that to anybody who's interested. Um, on the daily list are things you would think about. Um, uh, vinyl pads, um, handrails, um, equipment frames, um, spot clean the mirrors, vacuum carpets. Um, sometimes that gets forgotten about. Um, rubber flooring, wood flooring, all that needs to be um, cleaned and disinfected especially in the age of functional training where everybody's down on the floor and doing burpees and all that kind of stuff. Um, also removing trash. So even though those are on a daily checklist, um, this may be something to consider um, two or three times a day. So if you're only blocking a certain amount of hours to the gym for access in those downtimes, maybe a crew comes in and touches all those surfaces to make sure that they are disinfected. Now, certainly um, um, the gym users should be responsible for their own personal spaces. Um, in healthcare, we practice something called standard precautions, where you treat everybody as if they have something that you don't want. Um, surfaces should also receive that same scrutiny. So if we assume that every person and every surface is infected, our approach to cleanliness is probably gonna be a little bit more prudent. Um, certainly everybody needs to pay closer attention to their daily tactile interactions. Like before this, you know, who, no one really thought about how many times you touched your face. Um, so that's been kind of a, a labor of love. Um, so let's make it easier for gym um, users to be diligent. Again, wipes easily available, spray bottles if necessary, provide hand sanitizer, insist on masks. So um, we keep kind of honing in on that, but that's really important. Um, but since we're not all robots, um, we need to assume that human error will occur. Um, we can spend countless hours disinfecting, but the surfaces will become contaminated once we start, humans start circulating around again. Um, and if any of you have kids, you certainly understand that, that premise. Um, so that's why it's important to kind of provide another layer of protection. 
So Heartline has access to a hospital grade and a microbial protection solution that puts up um, a spiky layer. This is the true protectant part of this equation. So if you look down at that little um, a picture at the bottom, it's got the little blue spikes and then that virus thing that's in there. Um, so that's um, microscopic. It's not something you're gonna like see on your equipment. Um, but that's kind of what, you're, what we're talking about in this protective layer. So it stays in place for several months, even after repeated gripping and grasping and wiping of surfaces. Um, those little spikes kind of pierce the lipid layer, um, killing off the virus. It also keeps bacteria from proliferating or, or migrating or building up steam. Um, so um, kind of like a shout out to scientists who come up with all this stuff. Um, I think that's um, amazing. Um, and just like much research goes into the, um, the, the um, formulation associated with these chemicals, they also have researched how to use it most effectively. So Jeff alluded to a little bit about dwell time. Um, when you put on any kind of disinfectant, it doesn't kill the viruses or bacteria on contact. It has to sit there in order to start killing off what you're trying to kill. Sometimes the dwell time is five minutes. So it can be up to 45 minutes. Um, my husband, who um, is notorious for spraying, spraying bleach all around the kitchen, walks away, allowing the proper dwell time. I walk in with my black jeans, um, and you know what happens next. So um, dwell time is important to kill off these things. So depending on what you are using in your personal facilities, understand um, is it killing what you want it to kill? Is it staying in place long enough to do what it's supposed to do? And then um, you hope that the members start coming behind and cleaning off their own surfaces. Now, as far as the protection, that also has research uh, associated with them how to put it in. So if you, as you notice the person in the, in the picture with the, he's all suited up, he's got a sprayer. Now that's, um, a uh, what do they call that note electrostatic electrostatic sprayer yeah electrostatic sprayer sorry so we could go into the science behind ions and all that but I'll I'll save that for another day um I'm sure there's a collective sigh of relief out there um of course this topic's not sexy it's not uplifting it's just one of those necessary components that we kind of have to understand in order to keep our members and our residents safe when they're using our gym. Um, Jeff is going to take um, the reins again, and then you'll also be introduced to um, Justin Campbell, who will discuss the importance of self-care, that mind-body connection, and how to maintain an overall health and well-being. All righty. Uh, thank you very much, Kelly. That was, that was wonderful. Thank you. Um, just have one slide here uh, before I introduce Josh, Justin again. Um, I think it's important for everyone to understand, and a lot of our customers, um, and on this webinar, uh, we've kind of looked at the registration. Um, it's important for you to understand that 80% of the population, and this is prior COVID, right, did not have a gym membership, okay? And there's been a tremendous uh, influx of we're buying a bike, we're buying some bands, I'm getting this stuff in my home, I don't want to lose my routine. And, you know, we're not sure when gyms, commercial gyms will actually open. So my point really is um, twofold, right? There's going to be a, a, a greater um, pressure on these amenity spaces, fitness and everything else, uh, versus people going outside of that community and that lifestyle uh, to, to grab these things and expose themselves a little bit more. Um, my hopes are we all get back to normal someday and there's a cure uh, and we move on. Um, but even prior to COVID, 80% of our population did not have a gym membership. And my, my second point here is, what are we doing for those people that don't work out and their well-being, mental, right, versus physical, and, and keeping them uh, sane. I, you know, I have three kids and my wife's here at the same time too, and God love them, but it's a challenge. Um, 
the other piece since I'm on wellness is really we've seen a surge and there is a surge, 16% increase um, prior to COVID uh, that people are taking rejuvenating type classes. So in our consults and our design, Heartline Fitness I'm speaking, um, we're including these types of wellness and rejuvenating zones in the fitness centers or around the community, right? Doesn't have to be located in the fitness center, could be the lobby or the poker room or somewhere else. Uh, that you go, and I'm plugging you here, Justin, you go and you get some sips of wellness, right? Okay, right on. Um, so next really bullet is, is you know, that, that surge of, I need my home equipment because I'm never going to the gym again. I don't know how they're ever going to reopen. Um, we have solutions for that. So if you've seen us on our website, on LinkedIn, things like that, uh, we are able to take care of those needs for your residents, for you personally. We put some packages together. Um, it's not what this webinar is about, but that is there and it's, it's in high demand right now. So we wanted to touch on it. Um, and again, before I turn this over to Justin, really what three Sages is about and what I love about Justin and what he's doing here is we are all very focused in, and there's a bazillion things on Instagram and Peloton and all this, and it's virtual fitness, right? but it's just fitness, right? Have we forgotten about the mental and the wellness and the nutrition and some of these other things that there's 80% of our population that needs help, right? Let's make sure we cover that off. And that's what I wanted to do. And that's why there's this alignment with Three Sages and Justin is I just didn't want it to be fitness. So with that, I'm very excited to introduce uh, Mr. Justin Campbell. And we'll get your next slide here in a second. There we go. Awesome, awesome. Well, well thank you so much. I appreciate uh, the, the, the invitation, first of all, to, to join the Disinfect and Protect and certainly appreciative of the, uh, of the great introduction. Um, but it's interesting, you know, Jeff, that's a, it's a really good segue from your last slide into a little bit about uh, you know, what Three Sages is, who we are, and, and, and really what we're endeavoring to do. And, you know, in our close partnership, uh, what we can collectively help, uh, you know, property managers and developers to deliver not only to their to their colleagues, but specifically their guests, right? So, you know, having been in the fitness, traditional fitness industry for the better part of 15 years, whether, you know, working with and, and consulting traditional health clubs, more specifically the last, you know, four to five, six years on uh, working in, in amenity-driven spaces, hospitality, multifamily, um, large corporate what we were able to see is really this, you know, a big gap uh, in the industry and, and everybody in kind of in this, this world we live in is kind of go, 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 you know, heart rate, you know, bright lights, loud music and, uh, and performance. And, and we were really where we saw a big gap was this recovery restoration uh, area and, and whether that's mental and, and the need for mindfulness, meditation, uh, sleep visualization, you know, as you alluded to, Jeff, we're all in a in a crazy kind of world right now. And I would argue when we have argued that it was that way prior to COVID, but even more so now where you know, kids are running around where, you know, we're trying to squeeze in, you know, work and home life and, you know, the times are, are even less. So uh, just trying to find some creative solutions to address that. And so when we looked at, you know, three sages, what we wanted to do was try to build a business and a, and a platform and a solution that really helped facilities uh, address this, this gap. Uh, and what you see here uh, is just kind of a, a distillation of that. What we at Three Sages really built our uh, kind of our, our motto on is, is if we can capture people uh, and really help them recover, restore mindfulness, meditation, yoga, quick fixes through some, through the content, the content is really our honey. Uh, and if we can connect people through beautiful, you know, we produce all our own content, you know, real people, real movements. And, and so at the root of what Three Sages is, is really an experiential you know, restorative content creation company. Uh, and what we're trying to do is, is leverage, you know, technology and our, some of our design expertise to, to, to create those experiences. And we look at the need uh, to create differentiated experiences, the need to, to do things different in your fitness center and no sweat zones and lower energy uh, is more relevant than ever. And, and what you see here is, is, uh, you know, a reflection of everything that we do with our, you know, obviously our content. Um, we pull that together with some, some great technology. This here is, is a solution we're calling our restore line. 
intended to, to live in maybe a fitness center amenity where, you know, a stretch zone recovery area has really been, you know, overlooked. And oftentimes people put a, you know, medicine ball rack with a, with some stretch mats and maybe a BOSU and just kind of an afterthought. We really wanted to bring that space to life and create a, a destination. And you say 80% of the people aren't going to the fitness amenity. Some of it is because you're just not speaking to the right population and, and this will help you introduce people who believe in mindfulness and meditation and yoga who might otherwise not have come to your, your fitness amenity. So here's a great distillation of everything we do, right? So we're going to pull together our content design and technology and, and create these. And as Jeff alluded to just before this was, this is meant to be right sized up, right sized down, uh, can be altered to live inside of a, uh, inside of a studio environment or even in a, in a lobby, in a conference room. And, and the content is, is driven to provide uh, this restorative in nature, whether it's physical, as you see here, some of the incorporation of, you know, more uh, physical manipulation, you know, some of the hottest technologies and percussive therapy, if you've heard the names Theragon or Hyperize and, and some traditional rollers. But um, what we do understand is this is going to be very relative to the fitness center. And as you start to get people back into your amenities and they start to come back, which isn't going to happen overnight, and we realize that, uh, was the precipice for kind of a more formalization of our relationship with, with Heartline. And Jeff, if you want to go to the next slide, um, as we talked about our business, we, you know, we are a content company and we have a, you know, technology platform. I don't know if Jeff, you can, there you go. We built a mobile app on an iOS platform really around wellness and restoration. And we know that members are and guests and residents aren't coming back to your fitness amenity quickly. Jeff and his team were, were really cognizant of this and reached out to us with the understanding of, uh, of that we had a mobile solution and how could we give back to our partners who have just amazing amount of residents with beautiful fitness amenities that can't actually go to them and some, a lot of situations are actually closed. How can we, how can we service and provide and, and, and give to those residents in this time where mobile restoration is, is more needed than ever? So what we've decided to do and partnered and, and, and great kudos to Heartline for caring as much about their, their customers as they do. We put some data into the app uh, that lives on, you know, you can search it three stages on, in, in the Apple store. Uh, download it for free of charge, use the Heartline code, um, all case sensitive. Share this with your residents, share this with your, your colleagues and your staffs, and it's just a great way to, to, to fulfill some of those needs. And the, the, comp, the, the, the composition of the app is really around three pillars, move, nourish, restore. Move is gonna give you yoga flows, quick fixes, mindfulness miles, right? Things that you don't necessarily need equipment for. Uh, the restoration will be stuff like meditation or you know, sleep visualization. And there's also a, a, a nutrition component with about 25 to 30 quick, uh, quick, cool recipes. But again, just a really great way to kind of show this comeback strategy. We can take a mobile uh, in their rooms on, on, on the property grounds and eventually create a, a journey or a comeback strategy to, to get them back to the amenities with all the things that we've talked about earlier. Uh, and this may be just a further way once they're familiar with the content through the mobile solution that, you know, draws some connectivity back to the, to the fitness amenity. And um, so yeah, certainly follow up with Jeff and I'm happy to, to stay on and answer questions, but this app's a great way to, to kind of help fill that gap and, and do good for your, for your residents. Jeff. Awesome. Thank you, Justin. Uh, wonderful. All right. So my, uh, my coach, my mentor, uh, Mr. Bob Burgess, um, we, we've worked together very closely for the last 10, 12 years. He's now part of the Menity uh, Collective. Uh, with strategic accounts, and uh, there's no better person to talk about performance, data, and communication uh, with this next uh, sneak peek um, of Heartline's customer portal. Right. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. Welcome, everybody, and uh, thanks for being here. Uh, asset, asset management has been uh, something, I think, dear to Heartline's heart. Uh, it's been discussed for, for many, many years in our industry. And I think it's only been in the last few years that it's start where the technology is developed uh, to the point that we can really utilize this technology remotely uh, through the equipment to help us manage uh, our assets more effectively, whether those assets are in the fitness center or in Ben Bash's case, in the aquatics area. And I know American Pool is developing some interesting technology for monitoring the, uh, the aquatics area and, and the pH levels of pools. 
Um, but driving asset management has evidently been a, a key element of Heartline's business. Obviously, we, we pay a great deal of attention to how we manage our assets, whether the, those assets are employees, our, our clients, uh, our physical equipment. We're very mindful of, of how we manage it, our assets. Um, it's important to drive performance of our overall business. And absolutely, we want to do this for our clients as well. We, we believe if you're in an apartment or a condominium, uh, managing uh, a, a wide array of, of assets is, is very important and crucial to improving performance of, the, of your property. Uh, we also believe performance indicator dashboards are going to be, they were not only important before COVID-19, but in the direction we're going after COVID-19, I think they're going to become even more important for general management, senior management, to be able to be able to manage these assets in real, in real time. And as a result, I think they will create, help you create a competitive advantage uh, against your competition. Um, just like you wouldn't um, drive your car without dashboards and understanding uh, the temperature of your engine or how much gasoline you have um, and so forth. I mean, it's important to have these dashboards and it's going to be more important in the new normal and um, in this kind of virtual environment that we're starting to um, become part of. Uh, with that in mind, Heartline has built out, spent a lot of money, investment in its client portal. Uh, it's called HLB. You see it on the screen here. It kind of gives you an idea what, what the uh, program, the mobile app looks like. Um, and as you can see here with the bullets, obviously it's the assets are very important. Understanding the health of those assets is critical, whether it's... Uh, the usage activity of the, of the assets, the treadmills and the bikes and the ellipticals, uh, having serial number information, the age of the equipment, uh, repair history, and all kinds of spend data that has been occurring for those assets. To have them literally in the palm of your hand. Uh, so if I'm a property manager and I'm, and I'm walking the property and I go into the fitness center, and I see a treadmill down, you know, I, I'm able to, to go right to that asset on my, my phone in, in my account, and I'm able to immediately push a service notification to Heartline in this case. Um, and you'll get an immediate uh, acknowledge back. And then a couple hours later, within two hours, you'll have a service tech contacting you for to schedule an appointment to come out and see your facility. Obviously, you're, we're going to be able we're going to be able to take a lot of manual activity uh, off your shoulders with this app. Um, whether it's quick ability to look at a uh, history of invoices, look at current work tickets, uh, to see what what is pending, uh, where your parts are. Um, you know, and, and eventually you're going to be able to see, you'll see when you have a PM visit and eventually just like you do an Uber, we hope to have, be able on the day of your visit, you'll be able to check your app and see where uh, your service van happens to be that day. Uh, obviously, we're, you're going to be able to contact Heartline directly from this app. Uh, you're going to be able to con contact your sales rep. Um, and in fact, we're building in, uh, along with Three Sages, uh, an e-com element. So if it's gym wipes that you need to uh, reorder, you're gonna be able to do that directly from your phone. Uh, obviously, COIs, certificates of insurance, things that property managers, high schools, we're always getting inquiries. Instead of picking up the phone, you can, you can get that information right from your app. So it's all driven by, uh, you can get it for the Apple. I believe we you would also get it on an Android as well. Um, your browser. So I guess in summary, you know, we're after smart technology. Hopefully it's smart. 
Um, we're looking at data analytics. It's very important for the future. I, we're not quite where General Electric is in terms of being able to tweak their engines in, in the middle of an airplane in mid-flight to improve performance. We're not quite there yet, but we're all, we are able to see error codes. We're able to see history of the unit. We're able to track mileage. So there's a, we're able to track activity. Um, so it, it's gonna provide very interesting information to our clients in the future. And, and again, at the end of the day, it's all about getting the proper amount, the, the most accurate data we can get to make the best decisions we can about the assets, whether it's flipping the treadmills, uh, pulling a machine out that isn't getting much activity. So it's really gonna provide, I think, a great deal of data that's gonna give us insights to make better decisions about the management of our fitness centers, as well as, and I know American Pool is working on these same uh, areas of technology to help with the from from the aquatics standpoint. So thanks everybody for coming. We really appreciate you being on. And uh, back to you, Jeff. Awesome. Thanks, Bob. Great job. All right. So I'm going to move us quickly here to to Q and A. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, um, as as we mentioned in the invite, there's information here that you know we've gone through things either quickly or. This was a little bit longer than we planned, um, but we want to be able to share that with you. And there's some questions that are going to come up and there's some content and details that we may have not touched on here. We're uh, aggregating that all together. And by the end of the week, um, just connect to us. Really, if you want the information, go to help at heartlinefitness.com. If you're looking to engage in any of these services, obviously click the service wrench that's on uh, our website. But we want to provide some of these opening um, considerations to you. If you'd like to get on a, a list of, you know, how can I get some wipes? These are hot. We've got pallets of them coming in. Uh, love to help you with that. More information on uh, scheduling, disinfect and protect, or even a preventative maintenance, facility signage, wellness app uh, with Justin, uh, or just more detail on how do we onboard you with this new technology we have in the customer portal. So I will leave this slide up and we're going to switch over to Q&A. And what I'm basically going to do is our panelists are able um, to answer these live. And we're just going to start running down um, who's ready to answer uh, what. So panelists, if you, if you can open up your, your Q&A section and go ahead and, and tap on any of these questions, um, I should be able to. I see a question about Jeff. Um, what should wipes contain as a disinfectant if they are not contain bleed hydrogen peroxide or ammonia? Um, um, a lot of them are made with ammonium, so which is different than ammonia. Um, I think it's extra hydrogen atom or something, but it's, it's, uh, it turns into like a compound that has a salt. So it's not as corrosive, it's not as damaging on the equipment. So if you look at the different wipes manufacturers that are out there, there'll probably be a number of ammonium contact, content um, on that label. Okay, awesome. All right, we have another question in here, um, and I don't want to leave out Ben Bash. We've got some pull questions that have, have come in. He's still here. Um, what are the considerations, best practices, uh, should, an event, should, should a COVID-19 event arise um, with your center reopening afterwards? So cleaning response, uh, closed certain number of days, et cetera, things like that. Um, Get, I'll answer this one, Kelly, and you could chime in at the end. Um, you know, really go to your CDC guidelines, right? And, and this stuff is very fluid. It's, it's changing. But I, I think the most important consideration of all this, the obvious one is like disinfect and kill this stuff off, right? But what is it going to take to get people to feel comfortable to come back in and they're not scared to come out of their apartment again, right? Because something happened in the fitness center. So again, you know, planning for this, understanding you can disinfect or you need to shut it down because you can't disinfect. Uh, what is your plan and how will you attack this? There's some financial, you know, considerations, obviously, in this. you're disinfecting and protecting all day long, but put your plan together ahead of time. Kelly, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? 
Um, yeah, on the EPA website, it's not listed under disinfectants. It's listed under like pesticide something. So I guess viruses and bacteria are considered pests. So um, but if you do a search, you'll probably come up with it in Google or Bing. Yeah. yeah, I can send you the link. We can send you a link too if you want to look at that list. Okay. Awesome. And there was another question on there, kind of along the same lines, about how long does the antibacterial protection last on a surface? Um, really, until someone else touches it. So if an infected person touches that surface, um, it's no longer protected. Um, that's why we are offering the protection of that additional layer um, that we would spray on. Awesome. All right, question for Justin. There seems to be a lot of meditation apps out there. How is Three Sages different than other recognized names like Headspace and Calm? Yeah, great, great question. I actually saw that populate as well. Um, you know, obviously there are some, some great apps out there that people are recognized and familiar with in the consumer space as it relates to uh, you know, the mindfulness, whether it be Headspace or Calm. Really where we try to draw a distinction and. Uh, and, and feel like we have is, is we're much more holistic in, in wellness and you know to everybody wellness is something different uh, for us we really want to provide uh, many facets of that whether that be you know uh, physical rest restoration with some percussive therapy mindfulness uh, in terms of meditation sleep visualization uh, even some nutrition so for us really kind of be a more of a holistic wellness provider uh, with a bunch of different genres uh, so that's, you know, I think probably the biggest difference, interestingly, you're starting to see the comms and the headspaces kind of come around to, to kind of deepening their platform as well. Um, so maybe that's a good sign that we're, we're heading in the right direction. But um, and before I jump off, really, the last piece I, I did notice, Jeff, as well as is some people asking about iOS versus Android. Um, unfortunately, right now, it is just on the iOS platform. Do understand that, you know, our formal app launch was slated for the end of the year, uh, in which case we would have uh, been available on the Android platform. You know, in the the COVID era, you know, we just really saw this great opportunity in conjunction with you guys to to kind of pull that forward, and and you know, the lion's share of app users are on the Apple format. So uh, while you can't do it on Android right now, uh, that is absolutely part of the roadmap, and and would have been launched with that at the end of the year. But uh, again, just trying to to do good in the short term, so we launched it on just the iOS. So uh, apologies, but uh, was done with the the right intention. Great. Ben Bash, we've got a question for you. Actually, I'm going to read off two of them here. So uh, one is, does chlorine in the pool kill coronavirus? And two, what surfaces in the pool area outside of the water will need attention? Any other methods besides chlorine to keep pool and surrounding areas sanitized? Great. Um, yes. So the first, first question in terms of does chlorine in the pool kill the virus? Uh, yes. So in our pools, we're using sodium hypochlorite or uh, some other uh, product that, that, that brings the sanitizer into the water. We're fighting this stuff all the time, not just COVID-19. So uh, any, any other uh, pathogens that, that get in the water, we're, we're dealing with that all the time. So COVID is just one more thing that we have to deal with in the water, but um, it is inactivated uh, in, inside of the water. And even um, the CDC uh, had a, a specific comment just that there's no evidence of uh, COVID-19 spreading uh, through, through the water in the pool. Uh, this, the second part of that question in terms of the, the surfaces, I think you got to look at the pool area. You've got rails, you've got tables, you've got furniture that are not underwater. If we could spend our whole summer underwater, we, we'd be doing great. Uh, we got to come up for air. We got to, you know, get a suntan, those things. So all those spaces are subject to the same kind of considerations that you'd have in any other common area in your, in your community. So um, there absolutely has to be a plan uh, to, to uh, take care of those areas, you know, on the daily or on some schedule so that, that uh, you know, all the considerations that you're hearing about the gym, all those spaces need to be uh, maintained, uh, you know, throughout throughout the season. Awesome, thank you, Ben. Uh, another question uh, from from Scott: uh, What type of disinfected spray and wipes are you recommending, and why is this effective? Um, I'll go down the science path here on this one. 
Um, we are using a quaternary disinfectant. It has a 10 minute dwell time. Um, the biggest challenge with disinfectant right now um, is trying to get it. Um, and it's going to be even more challenging uh, as we open up. Um, so what we are using at Heartline is a hospital grade disinfectant. Um, it, it actually kills off things harder to kill than coronavirus, but it is EPA certified to kill coronavirus. Uh, it has a dwell time of 10 minutes. And you, you basically can apply this you know, through a spray, uh, through wiping down, but it needs to stay wet for 10 minutes. Um, and we have certain applications and customers where we're coming in and applying with electrostatic sprayers uh, to get a good even coverage uh, with the disinfectant and with um, the protectant solution that Kelly mentioned too. Um, one more question. Um, I think I killed two of them here with, with Jay. What is the hospital grade cleaner? Uh, chemical is in it. It's, it, there's, Kelly had mentioned don't use ammonia. Can't use ammonia, right? Smells like bleach. Um, these are ammonia, which is different. They're kind of salt compounds, and there's, there's, a, different, there's a few different types of ammonia or ammonium-type uh, chemical compounds in these quaternary disinfectants, right? So depending on what you're using, um, dwell times and things like that change, and then you also have to go back to the EPA to make sure, are you killing off the right stuff? Um, to, to put one more piece of information in this too, because I saw a question about wipes. Um, the wipes that we are selling, um, that, that it is a quaternary disinfectant that is in those wipes as well. So when we recommend wiping it down before a user uh, uses the equipment and after the user, you're virtually, you're virtually getting the same type of disinfectant um, on that surface. Uh, dwell time and how saturated the wipe was and things like that, th there's some error there, right? Versus spraying this on um, with an electrostatic sprayer and other applications. All right, let's go to another question here. What surfaces in the pool area outside? I did that one already. Sorry about that. <laughs> with social distancing, the new norm, Will it be possible for residents to schedule time on specific cardio units? I think, Bob, that might be better fitted for you. Yeah, I, I, uh, I assume everybody can hear me. Um, yep. Uh, the, the portal, it will be one of the features uh, for, for, the, for the HLB app um, where we were able to schedule time, there'll be a schedule uh, feature to, to, the, uh, to the portal where you're able to, uh, for a particular time of day, time of week, you can schedule 30 minutes or however you set up the, um, how many minutes you're allowing for that, um, for that treadmill use. The other interesting thing about, about the feature on, on the app, what we're trying to get to is availability. So say I live in a high rise and uh, I go to my app, um, I go online and I'm able to determine what treadmills, what ellipticals are available in the fitness center. And if I see one that is available, I can, I can hop out of, hop out of my apartment, hit the elevator, go down and, and go to the fitness center if it hasn't been scheduled. So, but if it's available, that's something that we want to build into uh, the capability of this tech technology. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Bob. Uh, next question is for Kelly. Uh, it, assuming cold temperature kills the virus faster, what temperature should we set the thermostat to? Uh, I think there's still a lot of unknowns. Um, the virus actually doesn't like heat more than it doesn't like cold. Um, so I don't know if you want to like turn off your air conditioning, especially not in Florida, but um, I think every day we're getting more and more information on what the virus does and doesn't like and what, what kills it and what, you know, what makes it stay longer. So I would just be more concerned with the surfaces and the cleaning versus the altitude and the temperature and humidity and all those other factors that we really don't have much control over. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. 
another question here, um, and I'll answer this one. Can I purchase items like wipes and accessories that I reorder monthly through the app? Uh, not yet, but it's coming. Um, we are launching an e-commerce site where you can uh, reorder the wipes and the, the commonly you know, used things, uh, or just set up a, a reorder point where you, know, you need a couple of other cases or whatever it may be every single month. Uh, that is coming so that we can make that a little bit more convenient for everyone. Um, Bob, another question for you, and you may have mentioned this. Um, can I see when my next PM or service call is on and when a tech is on his way? Yes, I mean, that, that will absol absolutely be part of the, of the client portal. You'll be able to see that information. You'll know who your tech is. Um, and obviously, you'll, you'll be able to seamlessly uh, communicate with our service department from the app. Okay. Let's go to another question. Uh, can you explain how this helps our community lifestyle and resident experience? Um, Justin, why don't you take that one? I think that may be dialed in a little bit more to the, the wellness app. Yeah, I think it's how is it going to, you know, a lot of what we're discussing uh, is the operational, the execution of of that fitness amenity or, or things on the grounds as it relates to the, the lifestyle portion, which hopefully we can, we can help facilitate and, and, and augment uh, for your residents. You know, the app's really intended to, to create, you know, to, to create an environment where people can de-stress, where can, people can sleep better. And, and I think, uh, and, and even so, you know, with the content and, and, and the wall and some of the solutions is created, is designed to actually, you know, be a community-based experience. So, you know, some of our ethos is people that are taking care of themselves and, and, and uh, are more inclined to take care of others and, and create that community. And whether it's mindful walks around the property, whether it's, you know, a, a group meditation session in a lower energy zone. So, you know, really intended for us is to, is to if we can keep people and help people get better mentally and physically and, and, and take care of themselves, they're inevitably and, and by nature going to take care of better care of others. And, and that in itself is what's going to create, you know, a really nice vibe and, and hopefully a better community feel uh, on, on a lifestyle perspective. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. Uh, next question here for you, Kelly. Do most cleaning companies have the proper cleaning solutions to deal with things such as COVID-19? At my site, uh, they have a cleaning service that takes care of the cleaning. Oh, yes, it will kill the COVID-19, um, um, I can probably say with assurance, but what will it do to your equipment? So we go back to what does, uh, what's in the cleaning products that they're actually using. And, uh, um, and I've seen cleaning crews in action too. Unfortunately, sometimes um, they're kind of not going through with the diligence that it requires also. Um, so um, whether you have a a cleaning checklist that kind of shows that everything got covered so that nothing is forgotten, or you just, you know, walk around with them until you feel comfortable that they actually are doing um, and touching all the surfaces that you want. But again, making sure that there's nothing harmful uh, for the equipment surfaces, especially electronics. Thanks, Kelly. And I, I would just add to this too, um, you know, if, if you have a cleaning company that's coming in to do this, um, maybe inspect the products that they are using to disinfect and question, um, you know, SOPs and procedures that they have. Uh, do they understand the dwell time uh, that the specific disinfectant they are using uh, needs to sit on any of the equipment or the surfaces that they're spraying it on? So it's dwell time. It's, there's actually a concern with, you know, a poor surface or a hard surface too, depending on the disinfectant. So you kind of need to dig in there a little bit with uh, what that cleaning crew may be using. Uh, Justin, for you, what is restorative work and why is it so recommended? Yeah, uh, great question and, and, and thanks. Um, and it's often something I think we, we kind of take for granted that people are and, and consumers are really understanding of what we mean by restorative. And, and, and it's, it's a category that can be, you know, restorative, recovery, mindfulness, well-being. I think a lot of people have different names for it. But uh, in terms of the genre, think of things like, you know, meditation, um, yoga, uh, kind of quick fixes, which are like, you know, uh, a really progressive movement-based stretch versus a static stretch. Uh, 
and then you know you start to think of you know just wellness and start and, and you know mindful miles having people talk to you positively and and, and that's kind of when we think of of kind of the restorative content it's really designed to to be that complement to to what most people do is performance strength build muscle build how do we take that mind and that body and help them recover so that they can repair and be ready to to perform again so um we call recovery restoration it's it's a, it's a broad category um you know the head spaces as i alluded to earlier the head space and calm really focus on maybe more of a meditation uh, or a, a sleep visualization. And for us, it's just a broad category uh, and really helping people kind of seek wellness in whatever way they, they're interpreting uh, you know, that particular experience. Awesome, thanks, Justin. Uh, question, I, I will answer this one from Scott. What if the wipe spray companies that normally provide, that they're providing for the fitness centers are not listed on the EPA website for disinfectants? Um, just, just so you understand, there's a difference between um, sanitizing, disinfecting, and sterilize. And Kelly kind of touched on this earlier. Um, you know, you're cleaning something, it's soap and water, that's kind of sanitizing and you're washing the dishes, right? Disinfecting is actually, this is a chemical compound that has to be approved by the EPA. You can't just say, oh, I'm disinfecting, but you're using soap. That's not what the disinfecting uh, process or term really is. So if it is not listed on the EPA, it is probably not, you know, an approved disinfectant. And what the EPA is doing, whether it's wipes or a disinfectant, is they are testing to tell you what this kills, right? And we are constantly saying, hey, this is what this kills. The virus is not a living organism, right? It is a, a RNA, which is a DNA messenger inside a lipid layer that protects it. And that's what allows this thing to sit from three hours to nine days, depending on the surface humidity and the temperature. So when you look at disinfectants, they will attack living, living organisms like bacteria and things like that, that grow right after you disinfect. Uh, and it will also attack that lipid layer and then get inside to destroy that uh, DNA kind of messenger that you know, causes all this, this damage and replication. So the best way to kind of answer your question really is look at the chemicals on your wipes and go to the, the EPA website and try and reference products and chemicals uh, if it's not approved to see if you're getting close, right? Because there is an approval process to be on the EPA, um, but I would say if you can find something that's pretty close and this is all you got, there's a pretty good chance, right? But the, the best thing, you know, probably to have in your back pocket is an EPA approved um, and there's backing and there's testing behind it. So thank you, Scott, for that question. Uh, next question. Residents are now working out in their homes and looking to add treadmills and other noise emitting machines. What do you recommend? Uh, Bob or Kelly, who wants this one? Go, go ahead, Kelly. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, the, in, in closed spaces, you want to be mindful of your neighbors. Um, you know, if you live on the second floor and a, a person upstairs is walking around the heels, you can hear that. Um, so treadmills tend to put out a lot more noise and vibrations, especially on a flat-footed runner than, per se, a bike. Uh, even some, certain bikes are, are even noisier, like a chain bike is going to be more noisy than a, than a belt-driven bike. Um, so you just have to kind of be mindful of what equipment are going to be less noisy. Plus, with a lot of treadmills, there's special power considerations too. Um, you can't just plug any treadmill into the wall. Um, that requires an electrician to come in. Um, but you can certainly do a lot of body weight exercises, bands, balls, tubes, all those kind of things that really um, create great resistance without all the, the noise that accompanies it. Or just go outside. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Kelly. Ben Bash, question for you. Any additional methods to keep water sanitized? Uh, yeah, so, so there's the, the chlorine and bromine that the health department uh, will typically require in the, in the commercial pools for, for the reasons we, we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, but, you know, what we're, we're looking at water quality and um, we're, we're understanding that what, what is best if we can have layers of protection uh, because 
uh, you, you want to have something underlying the other thing. So a little bit of redundancy in some ways and uh, sanitizers that are working um, through different, through, through different uh, strategies. So we have, uh, we have some great products and, I, and Bob mentioned a little bit about automation um, that, that helps maintain all, all, all the sanitizer automatically 247 and allows remote monitoring. But on top of that, what, uh, there's UV sanitation and ozone sanitation that disinfect the water uh, in different ways. So there, there are ways that we can add additional layers of protection to the, to the, current, to the current facility. So you're gonna hear more about that soon. Great, thanks, Ben. Kelly, a uh, question for you. How often should we be disinfecting and protecting our amenity fitness center? And how do I know uh, if our current cleaning products are appropriate? And there was one other question about um, using bleach in here. Okay. Um, with your, it's got to be like a team effect. You know, it kind of takes a village. So your um, cleaning crew is disinfecting constantly all the surfaces that people are coming in contact with. Your members and residents are wiping down the surfaces before and after they access the equipment. Uh, those, are, those are temporary and they really they only disinfect in most cases until someone else comes along and touches it with um, pathogen hands. The protective layer, uh, that can last up to months. So it coats all the equipment from the dumbbell handles to the stability balls to the treadmill rails. Um, you can wipe it, you can grip it, you can sweat on it, and that does not go away for several months. So that application doesn't need to be done, but maybe once a quarter. Um, um, and again, we're offering that service to anybody who needs that. Great, thanks Kelly. Um, another question here, is there new signage or video training available to guide customers on new fitness center usage rules? Um, I have not seen video content, to be honest with you. I think we're all kind of still figuring this out. Uh, most of us have, if, you know, if you're the one going to the grocery store these days, um, there's definitely signage there and, and things on the floor to, to keep distancing. Um, I have not seen any video uh, yet. Um, my recommendation earlier really was uh, making a video to communicate um, what you are doing um, and, and how you are handling uh, certain things. It doesn't need to be a, an alarming video, uh, but I think we can all communicate better through body language and, and visual rather than just typing it up and, and people don't necessarily read it. So uh, great, great question. Kelly, another one back to you. Can we put spray bottles all over the facility since we don't have enough wipes? Yes, I mean, well, convenience is key. So you don't want to have like, uh, we don't want to have people walking across the fitness center past other users to access their wipes. So if you're using spray bottles, um, pair that with paper towels so that they can spray on the paper towel and then wipe off their surfaces versus spraying directly on to the surfaces. That can be damaging to electronics, uh, the screens. Um, it's just white moisture and electronics don't like moist environments. Yeah, awesome. Uh, one more question here. Um, what should property managers be mindful of as it relates to their amenities and do you anticipate these changes be structured long term? Uh, great question. Uh, the things obviously to be mindful of, uh, we had some bullets on it earlier, is you, you need to adhere to social distancing, uh, masks, and, uh, you know, congregations of, of, of multiple people. From there, it's really, a lot of these facilities are unique, unique in, in what uh, is, is there, uh, locker rooms, showers, bathrooms, multiple access, things like that. Um, go back to your CDC guidelines um, to help you better interpret what measures you should be taking um, and understanding your community too. There's younger communities, older communities, in between communities. Um, th I, there's no white labeled answer. Here you go. This is what you do. Uh, there is some interpretation to all of this. As far as structuring it long-term, um, 
it's a fluid situation. I think we get through this, to be honest with you. But I think at the end of the day, there is a new norm for all of us, whether we're talking fitness or just your everyday life and your, your, your business. Um, what does that look like, right? <clears throat> there is going to be a longer term effect of people's anxiety or willingness to actually uh, get into spaces uh, where they could be possibly exposed. Um, and I think people are becoming more sensitive that even outside of the virus, uh, there's a lot of people that have compromised immune systems that in places that particularly aren't that clean or these types of services aren't being provided, uh, it could be very hazardous to them. So Kelly mentioned, <coughs> excuse me, MRSA, um, herpes, things like that. This, you know, we as people carry a natural flora of bacteria that doesn't hurt you, right? We're, we're the little commuters of all this stuff. Uh, not everybody uh, has the best immune system, right? So being able to disinfect things, put protectant type solutions on it so that we're not transmitting it and we reduce that, whether it's the coronavirus or something else, this is all in good measure and what I hope you know becomes more of the long-term norm <clears throat> not necessarily the treadmills I took outside or unplugged. I think we can get back to that norm for sure. But I think how we um, clean these rooms and, and participate in these rooms will, will hopefully be long-term. But great question. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Kelly, a couple more here. Can we buy antimicrobial protection solution from Heartline? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Um, we've got uh, SKUs available for, for purchase. Um, it's kind of a, a loaded question because y even though you can buy it, uh, the application process is a little bit more complicated. Um, the sprayers that we use are tech SKUs. Um, not only have they been trained on how to um, apply everything properly, um, uh, those they're a little bit expensive. So, you know, we're offering as part of our preventive maintenance um, in some cases through the end of May, but um, uh, it, it, it's, it's a little bit more than just buying the solution. So that's the short answer. If we, we can go into more details, um, like one-on-one, -on -one, if you're really interested in, in that purchase. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Bob, question for you. We're getting down to the, the, the wire here, last few. Um, what yep. type of data will you be providing at a property level and portfolio level with the HL Beat, the customer portal? Yeah, X, great question. Um, I mean, we're, we're looking, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier about we're going to be uh, tracking asset uh, serial numbers, equipment usage. Uh, obviously, we want to know uh, the spend uh, historically on each piece of equipment. Again, and also realize Heartline has been doing this for over 35 years, so we have a tremendous database of spending data uh, for a, a wide range of industry sectors, whether it be college wellness, high school, uh, apartment, uh, office buildings, medical. Uh, we're trying to dig deep into our database to, to be able to provide as part of the client portal, you'll be able to see if you're an invest, uh, an A investment property, we'll be able to develop um, what other assets in those types of uh, facilities and how they are uh, holding up and the kind of activity that may be normal on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis for that, for that equipment. Um, obviously, we're trying to drive total cost of ownership type of information. We all know that acquisition cost is only one element of the cost of a product. If you buy, buy in fitness has typically three, le three levels of pricing, A, B, and C, the A being more of your luxury type of product line. And so the brands are different, the price points are different, the quality is different. And so you're gonna have different uh, residual values for those products. You're gonna have different life expectancies for those products. And so, and then there's a utility benefit by the hot for the higher end product. So all that together, we're trying to bring that information 
into into this into this database obviously with the idea it's just not about preventive maintenance anymore but we're building this data so that truly we can start to predict uh, equipment failure and in in the amenity fitness space the number one dissatisfaction satisfier for your residents is down fitness equipment so uh, just like in the pool we don't want the pool to be down we want the, the the pH levels to be where they need to be. Same thing in the fitness. We need that equipment in fine tune and in and great working condition. And being able to monitor it remotely, uh, you're going to be in a better position to do that. Hey, hey Jeff, can I just add to that real quick, if you don't mind? Which you know, I think Bob wonderfully speaks to, and as well as yourself, speak to the you know, how the data can drive just operational uh, improvements, uh, whether that's asset management, whether that's, you know, operational costing and, 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 and predictive measures. But I think as it relates to the, to the lifestyle brand and, and some of the stuff that we've been chatting about, that data is, is monumentally important as well, right? Because now how, is, how are your residents responding and reacting and what do they like? What treadmill do they like? Is it because it's in front of the, the window? Or, you know, what, what type of genre are they, are they going to in the app? Are they really consuming meditation more than, than, uh, than the nutrition? So this data, while it can help you, you know, drive costs down and, and operationally execute better, uh, it's a great way and, and, a, and a proven way to, to understand the behaviors and the wants and the desires of your actual residents as it relates to their lifestyle um, endeavors. And it's really showing the, the elevation of the resident experience. As a result, in terms of how much activation, true activation, you're getting in here in your amenities. So it's it, it's it's here. The cost is coming down. You're going to be able to get better information, more accurate information, and you're going to be able to compare that against other like kind properties that you compete with. So um, it's it's good. It, the the data is getting there, and it's going to be very helpful in the future for making decisions. Great. Thanks, guys. There was one more question in here from Scott, and it just disappeared, but I'm going to answer it anyway. Um, is hydrogen peroxide, if it's approved by the EPA, safe for the equipment? And no, it is not. Although hydrogen peroxide has one of the fastest kill times from, you know, 30 seconds to a minute out of any of the disinfectants, um, it is corrosive on copper, aluminum, and brass. And obviously we have this in our electronics, we have brass in our oral light bushings on the strength. So, you know, you're not gonna just totally blow things up, but I'm telling you long-term use of some of these products that are corrosive, uh, you run the risk of, you know, here's a $5,000 treadmill that's in high demand and now it doesn't work after your cleaning crew, you know, through the mop bucket on the console <laughs> and, and the treadmill belt. So really, whether it's the disinfectant or it's the people that are applying it, you really want to have a professional surface or, or company come in and do this that understands the surfaces and the sensitive um, areas of the equipment. Thanks, Scott. Uh, one more question here. So I downloaded the HL app and it doesn't recognize my email address. It gave me the number for Heartline, but doesn't direct me. So with the HLB, a couple things here. Um, right now, in the app store, we're changing the name. Again, this was the this is the pre-launch. Uh, we are changing the name to HLB. Right now it is HL Customer Portal. Um, in order for you to get in, uh, your email has to be registered on your client account. So if you want to get the app, it is in the app store, but you need to communicate with us so we can onboard you, set up all your assets. Uh, and then everything will work great. So it, it is live, it is working, but there's an onboarding process to this um, that we can get you 100%. Again, click the wrench, uh, go to help at heartlinefitness.com and um, we can help you get through any of these questions. Last question I'm gonna do here and then we're gonna wrap this up. Um, appreciate everybody's time. We've, we've really gone way over here, uh, but we've answered a lot of questions. If you decide to create more multi functional space, how much space is required for one person to exercise, and what are our options for such space? Are outdoor and rooftop spaces option? Um, Kelly, you want to fire away on that one? Yeah, sure. Now, um, six, six feet distancing still applies, no matter if you're exercising or you're at the grocery store. So that's the first thing to consider. 
Um, but are you using other um, modalities like a, a kettlebell or a, a ball? Um, I would give yourself, you know, a good, like if you can take your, your arms and stretch them out and go work in a circle. Um, nobody should be able to touch your fingertips um, in that direction. And then give yourself another arm's length. So um, if the person next to you can touch your fingertips, everybody needs to kind of take a few steps um, in different directions. Now, again, is there a wind? Is there, you know, other things to be considered? So it's still no more than 10 people per space. Um, distance yourself appropriately. I still recommend wearing masks, even though that might be a little uncomfortable. Um, but until we know more about the virus um, and uh, people's immune response to it, it's always better to be safe than sorry. And if you can stand up across and treat everybody as if they have something that you don't want. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, you know, I just really want to thank, you know, the, the time of our attendees and the time of our, our panelists. Um, we truly appreciate, um, you know, you listening in and, and all of our experts here with the, the commentary and the presentation. This has been uh, hopefully very informative for everybody. Um, we are hosting these webinars every single Wednesday at 1.30. Uh, we will kind of cover a little bit of the same material uh, each time, but we will bring in uh, different experts and, and focus on some other areas uh, in, in addition to what we've kind of focused in on today. So please join us uh, next week if you can and reach out uh, through help at heartlinefitness.com or our wrench, uh, click the service wrench if you need to schedule any of these services. And we're here to help and, and do more. So thank you for your time and uh, be well. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Cheers. Thanks, panel. Bye-bye.